let me say, a word in defense of reason in dialogue with faith. Because faith is that proof. Faith unites us to that substance. But reason, in order to realize its full potential, needs the horizons revealed by and truths contained in the faith. And not just any faith, but the Catholic faith. Humility really is a key foundation for the whole Christian life. What is humility? I love the definition given by the great medieval uh, saint, St. Bernard of Clairvaux. He says, humility is knowledge of self, knowing the truth about oneself. Knowing the truth about oneself, knowing our weaknesses, our fears, our sins, our insecurities, and whatever good qualities we have, we acknowledge that. But we also, even with those good qualities that we may possess, we have a profound understanding that those good qualities did not come from me. They came from God. They came from the people God placed in my life. Certain circumstances, situations, moments of formation that he may have given me. But I know myself enough, that is not my own. So humility, in the end, is knowing just how much we are truly dependent on God. We see ourselves as we really are. Now, most Christians can talk a lot about humility. We can be very good at talking about that, right? You may hear someone say, oh, I'm humble. I know I need to be humble, and I, I know I'm a sinner. I know I'm weak. I know I need God. I know I'm not good in this area. Uh, and, and it's easy to talk about humility, but Bernard and many of the other medieval mystics would talk about humility at a more profound level, what I like to call experiential humility, where one acutely feels their weakness such that there's, there's no pretending. There's no false airs of how I, I think I'm in control in this area or I think I've got this you know, down right now. I'm getting good at this prayer thing now. We really see ourselves as we really are and we see how little we are and we acknowledge how dependent we are for everything on God. God can do great things with the humble soul. He can do great things with the humble soul. This reminds me of St. Therese and her little way, or someone like Mother Teresa. These were people that had a great boldness. They were so daring with their lives to radically give themselves totally to God and serve him in amazing ways. But it was all based on a confidence not in their own ability that they were really smart or they were just really good at this they knew themselves as they really were and they they didn't place their confidence there and because they had humility because they knew themselves well they were honest with themselves they could then rely completely on God because they knew over here I, 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 I'm convinced of my weakness here, and I trust God to do these amazing things. Now, what's the, what's the vice that undermines humility? There's two of them. There's a pride in particular, and I wanna, I'm going to talk about vanity here. Uh, vanity undermines humility in that it seeks the praise of men. It seeks the glory of this world. That's why it's often called vain glory. The person who struggles with vanity grasps after attention. They seek recognition, honor, being a part of everything and recognized and at the center of things. So Paul might challenge us to ask ourselves, are we lowly, are we humble? Or do we worry too much about what others think of us? Do we sometimes do or say things to draw attention to ourselves? Do we find ourselves comparing ourselves with others all the time? Lack of humility is a danger, not just for my own private spiritual life. It certainly is that. But in Paul's letter, he highlights humility because he knows lack of humility will cause division, envy, suspicion, and it will tear down the body of Christ. It will cause disunity in a family. It will cause disunity in a parish. It'll cause disunity and many good things that the Lord may want to build. Have you ever prayed for humility? That's a dangerous prayer, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Do 
true story, a friend of mine was once uh, visiting a family in a, in a, out of town, and, uh, and, and then he needed to get to church, and he didn't have a car, and the family was a very wealthy family, and they had a Porsche. And, and the father of the family said, here, I want you to take the, my Porsche to church. Uh, you, you just go drive it, have fun. You know, just, just take as long as you need to. You know. uh, and, and my friend it was on one hand all excited, but then he thought, oh, it's going to be really awkward driving up to the church parking lot in a Porsche. This isn't mine. I feel really weird. Uh, but he went, and he had a fun time driving that Porsche to church. <laughs> he was going on. Had, and, and then he got to the church, and he, he parked at the farthest parking spot away. <laughs> He kind of felt a little embarrassed, but then he said, you know what, I, I'm going to thank God. This was a wonderful, this is fun to drive this car. I've never had a chance to drive a car like this. But God, I also want to pray that you keep me humble. Pray, so help me to be humble. And then he opens up the door and steps out and steps on dog poop. <laughs> Literally, a second after he prayed that prayer. So watch out. We pray for humility. It can be a very dangerous thing. Have you ever seen the litany to hum- of humility? That's a wonderful prayer to pray. Uh, This is a great prayer that helps build humility, encounters pride, encounters the pride and vanity that divides the family of God. Uh, Some of the lines from this prayer challenges us to pray for the desire. uh, uh, Free me, deliver me, Jesus, from the desire of being praised. Free me from the desire of being preferred. Deliver me, O Jesus, from the desire of being approved. And then it goes on, and then if you ever struggle with envy, you find yourself competing with someone else, this is a wonderful prayer to pray. It says, uh, Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it, that others may be esteemed more than I. Grant me the grace to desire it, that in the opinion of the world, others may increase and I may decrease. Grant me the, the grace to desire this, Jesus, that others may be praised and I unnoticed. It's a beautiful prayer to pray. Now, sometimes in our lives, we may even have someone in our life that we, we just find tension with and we may, we may even find ourselves jealous or envious of that other person. Do you have someone like that in your life now or maybe in the past? If you do, one great thing you could do is you can use the litany of humility and even put that person's name right there in the prayer. And you could say, Jesus, I pray that this person may be praised and I unnoticed, that this person may be chosen and I set aside. A great way to grow in this foundational virtue of Ephesians chapter 4 for building up the body of Christ.